Cool. Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio here at Sundance. Fisher Stevens, Louis Cyclis. Um, firstly, congratulations on having this film here. You've obviously had success here before. How does it feel to be back at Sundance? Feels uh, it's good now because we finished this first screening, so I feel much more relieved. Uh, yeah, it's it's exciting. You know, Docs and Sundance just are the marriage made in heaven. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. so. There's no better place to premiere your doc than Sundance because they really support documentary. It's such an incredible run after the Cove um, as well. Must have kind of bring that kind of fond memories of just being able to really give a film a proper launch and knowing that you're going to be able to create that dialogue, really? Well, I mean, yeah, we didn't know that until yesterday. You don't know the film's gonna play with a real audience. We're watching it, and then when, if, when the sound and the picture comes together and you've seen it you know, 300 times, you're looking yeah. at little tiny pieces, but then you, know, you become a little bit numb. You know? that, uh, so I was relieved to see we had such an exuberant response to it, because it was just like, uh, I'm feeling it today because we partied last night to, yeah. to celebrate. That's good, that's good. Because there's like such an epic nature to even the subject of this film. I mean, racing extinction, I mean, it's such a massive topic, but even the way you dealt with it, having kind of the, the, the you know, the activist, kind of uh, the, the actual covert operations part of the film, then the bit that we like to call the kind of nature porn, of seeing these amazing shots of these beautiful creatures, and then, you know, this kind of next step, what's gonna be this, how are we gonna get these people to move, what's gonna be the kind of transition from just movie to something broader. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a much higher bar than most, like a narrative film, because, yeah. you know, you, you need to entertain, first of all. You, know, you want to deliver exposition, but you don't want to have it be boring. And at the end of the day, the, the, the film to me is an absolute failure unless it gets people to, to act. So, you know, it's not just butts and seats. It's like trying to change hearts and influence behavior. Tell me about the importance of getting Vulcan in uh, in order to do that, to take that leap from just cinema on screen to activism and potential action on the streets. Well, they, <coughs> their involvement really began, uh, it's like the, after the movie is done, we need Vulcan so much because you learn a lot in the movie and a lot of, we, we, we do give you like, okay, here's a couple quick things you can do, but really if you text this, if you text race, R-A-C-E, you're gonna really learn about how to go deeper in conservation, in what you eat, in how you power your house, how you power your car. So Vulcan is, creating a platform, the jump off, there's really the main reason we were excited about making a film about this, was to change the way you think about your daily life because there's gonna be 10 billion of us on the planet in a few years and it will never sustain us unless we alter our lives now. Talk to me about where that comes from for you. I mean, I, you know, I've read that your mom was an activist, right? Yeah, activist. yeah. Um, so for you guys both, I mean, Louis, you've had kind of I feel like you've had a couple of different careers almost, unless, mm -hmm. you know, from the photography, but then also having this kind of, the element of the photography where you dealt with the dinosaur finds, mm -hmm. where which kind of has this whole element of extinction and kind of documenting real extinction that's already happened as well uh, in the past. But for you guys, like, who ingrained that sense of kind of community or nature or world, you know, that responsibility for you? Was it parents or was it a teacher? Like, Oh, well, for me, it was a musician, you know, uh, Pete Seeger, the, you know, an activist. Who's that? <laughs> you just kidding. Joking. He's older than yeah, me. Yeah, no, it was a, um, oh, no, it was a, it was an amazing, you know, folk singer, sort of ushered in the, the folk era, and to me, it was like, I got, you know, sucked into the environmental movement, you know, back in 1975, protesting nukes and sitting with Pete Seeger and all these great musicians and talking about how you could use art to influence society. And I could, you know, I sort of do that National Geographic. I did a story on, on garbage when there was only one mandatory recycling program in America. I did a cover story, and I'm not saying I was responsible for it, but I was part of a movement. And now there's recycling, you know, on every desk in America. So I could see that. For me, it was like mass media, a, a really well-crafted story can really influence humanity. You change the core. You, there was a big ship going down as it was headed, you know. Over a, over a you know a waterfall, but you can you know start this a, a small movement now will mean you're you know better on course years later. Yeah. Sure. Well, for me, um, my mother was actually arrested in 1968 during the conventions in Chicago, and uh, was also very pro civil rights. So I grew up in a very active household. My father really wasn't, but um, and then when I started uh, acting, 
and having some success, I enjoyed it, but my mother was like, well, you, you, this is great for you, but what about what are you going to do with the world? And, you know, I, so I always had a bit of an activist background, but then once I dipped into the documentary world, and, you know, I, I loved to act, and I'd go to the set and do my lines, and it was really fun, but you wait around a lot, and then once I started working in this world, you realize, like, you can do both, and w working in docs and meeting incredible people and realizing, learning how we're, you know, we're in trouble, right? So I do feel a responsibility to try to uh, illuminate that, and that's why it's great to work with Louis on this. Yeah, and you talk about steering that ship, and of course there are milestones and barriers to get through. Um, after having the code here last time, it going all the way through to the Oscars, um, having that kind of stamp from that peerage and that recognition on that level, how, how significant was that in actually getting the message heard um, and did you see a significant change because of the awards in addition to the, the effect in terms of just the play and the ability to get a play? Um, well, it's certainly, you know, we came here and that was the first film I'd ever worked on. Fisher had done like 25 of them at that point. Yeah. And um, I don't know, it, it, we, we, you know, I was an, an unknown commodity back then. Now we're, we're like a brand and it feels like, you know, we could have, you know, a lot of Hollywood directors have told me the second films of a successful first director always suck, so don't even bother to do it. And so I spent the last five years trying to like prove that myth wrong. And I think we did it. And I think it with, with his, his talent, you know, bringing it into the storytelling the whole process, team. it's a, uh, you know, we, I think we took it to the next level. It's, yeah. it's, it's a lot of fun. I think people are, I, a lot of people didn't see the code because they thought it was going to be too violent. And I think people, after they see this film, are going to go back and revisit, you know, thinking, Let's go see this movie. I don't want to see the first time around. Yeah, I also think like really, you, you know, just in terms of getting perhaps preaching to the unconverted. That's or, yeah. You know. That's really the my goal with this movie. Much more is and and I'm not like Louis is a you know he's an activist and and he he work he he hangs out in this world and I love this world but I'm kind of part of the arts you know the art the actor director scene whatever and I want to get people to see this that don't think about the environment. They don't think about the environmental movement. They're sitting at home, they want to be entertained, and they want to learn something. And I think that was really our goal with this movie, was to entertain and to make people go, whoa, what the f is going on here, man? So this movie, I hope we, you know, we'll, we'll get a bigger, broader audience. That was really Louis' goal when he called me to work with him on this, and I think, you know, I think this movie has that possibility. Which is why it was also interesting seeing Tom Shadyac's name in the credits too, because, I mean, obviously you had huge successes with like Bruce Almighty and things like that, and then moved on to I Am, which had success as a doc. Did he, was he involved in any of the creative consulting or? No, that was, uh, it was my connection with him, yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he, you know, he's sort of an executive producer, like, you know, gave us some. Passionate, uh, <laughs> passionate. Uh, oh, he's, he, he's a big supporter of, yeah. of, of ours. Just like, you know, to have, for me to have a guy like that, you know, he has a lot of clout in that business, so it's, it's great to have him on board with that. And then, uh, just quickly, in terms of all the different locations that you shot, um, you know, how, how hard is it to pull that sort of a production together? Do you go through the normal channels and try and set it all up ahead of time, or do you kind of take the Rico Barry approach and kind of turn up and try and get stuff done? Uh, you know, when we were going to China, I thought we'd just go to some markets and and take a look around, but these guys I went with, they were the real deal. They were like, no, man, we gotta do, like, we're gonna go in there, we have to do, you know, bust these bad guys, because you only have one chance at it. It's like, and then we started to do all this role playing, like, well, no, this meant, what am I gonna be doing? It's, yeah. it's okay, you're the buyer, you're the old guy, you know, so we had this, it was much scarier to me than, than the Cove, because I was, you know, you're sneaking out in the middle of the night trying to get past cops, but like, here you're, conf you're confronting like this far away the bad guys and trying to pretend like you're a dealer and you know something about the business and it was uh, excellent acting on Louis' part <laughs> in this film really good that's the third installment of the Louis uh, yeah career. now he's gonna become an actor yeah well he did he does he acts pretty well he plays <laughs> Louis Sawyer fish <laughs> purveyor I'm not an actor but I play one in the movie that's yeah. right um, such massive scope uh, for this film such you know such a big kind of agenda such you know massive topic for people to talk about. So in order just to get all this information into such a short time frame, 
What did it hurt you to leave out? What was that kind of golden baby that you were like, come on, we just had can't, can't we'll kill a lot of babies. I'm always trying to squeeze a, like a, a arm or a leg back in. What's you know? an example of one of the But kids? there's one oh. guy, I just want to say one guy because I'm feeling really responsible for this, but the guy who started Save the Whales oh, is man. a guy named Roger Payne. And Louis, um, he was a big part of the Cove originally, and he was in it. And he's the one guy we just can't seem to, his, 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 his presence is felt because of the whales, but he's someone I feel really bad about oh, him. There's a, there's a, the problem with the film is that there was so much Same. incredible yeah. material, some great stories, and this whole setup that we had worked out of like finding this buoy and this relationship to the SOSIS, this under, underwater surveillance system, it all got reduced to, to me saying, I know this guy. Mm -hmm. It was like we had this, we had one line. 10 minutes. You know, that exposition originally comes down to like this a yeah. couple of sound, and it doesn't really quite do it for me. So there's like, every, when I hear these lines in the movie, it's like, you know, I just see the blood on the, <laughs> I'm yeah. still the but operating it's better. room. The movie's better for it, yeah. but it's hard, it's hard. Well, I've got to congratulate you both yeah. for what you're doing. Um, you know, anyone who starts an ocean preservation society in the middle of a country, not on an ocean, has got to have some <laughs> some sort of strength of conviction. He spent a lot of time in the oceans, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly. conveniently located between two oceans. So yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, but congratulations on all the work you're doing, and, and Fisher, ever since we saw Crazy Love back here. Oh, cool. It's, uh, it's been a good ride. Thank you, yeah, it's been fun. Very cool. Thanks for sharing all right. with us, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah.